that's that's the, that's the story I have, which is not really a story at all. That's just me making random statements. Do you guys want to know any of this? Here it is. It's a book haul, but I'm going to tell you what I'm reading. So, oh yeah, if you love second chances, <laughs> read the book, Audrey, read the book. So in this book, we are following Daphne. Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse and welcome to another book haul video. So today is a mix of pre-orders, I feel like with a couple of exceptions, mostly books I pre-ordered, and publisher gifts. Thank you very much to all of the publishers who I will call out when we look at the books. So these are in no particular order. I will let you know which ones I got and which ones were gifted to me and I will let you know which ones I've read because I actually have read a handful of these books. So <laughs> isn't that exciting? Okay, let's get in. In no order. The first book I have is a pre-order that I have not read yet. This is Buy Baby by Carol Lovering. This just came out like a week or so ago as of the time I'm filming this. So what is time? It's always kind of a little bit warped here. But I just read about this book and had to have it. So most all of the pre-orders would have been in one of my most anticipated books videos. So this one is Every Friendship Has Its Shadow. So in this one we have A New York Apartment, A Brisk Fall Night, 35 year old Billy West has hears terrifying screams. It's her lifelong best friend Cassie Barnwell, one floor above, and she just realized her infant daughter is missing. Billy is shaken as she looks down into her own arms to see the baby, remembering with a jolt of fear that she is responsible for the kidnapping that has instantly shattered Cassie's world. So some sort of toxic friendship, some sort of dark and messed up situation happening here. She kidnapped her best friend's baby. So I have heard nothing but fantastic things about this book and I heard all the pre-buzz and I had to have it and here she is. Stay tuned. So same for the next book. Pre-ordered it, haven't read it yet. They both came out the same day. This is Listen for the Lie by Amy Tintera. I have heard that the audiobook of this is fantastic because there is a podcast element to it. So I actually did get an audiobook arc of this as fate would have it. So maybe I'll do a mix of both. I don't know. We'll see. I'll let you guys know, but I can see the podcast part of it. So it says, what if you thought you murdered your best friend? And if everyone thought so too? And what if the truth doesn't matter? So by baby, she's kidnapping her best friend's baby. Here she thinks maybe she killed her best friend in the past. So I don't know if we get the dual timelines in this, but Lucy and Savvy were the golden girls of their small Texas town. Lucy married a dream guy with a big ring in an even bigger new home. Savvy was the social butterfly loved by all, and if you believe the rumors, especially popular with the men in town. But after Lucy is found wandering the streets covered in her best friend Savvy's blood, everyone thinks she's a murderer. So it's years later, there is a podcast that is looking into Savvy's murder, which is called Listen for the Lie. It has a very good looking host and Lucy is forced to return home and face what happened back then. So also I've heard fantastic things about this one, small town, lots of secrets, past and present timelines. Did she murder her best friend? We're gonna find out, okay. Next book I have was gifted to me from Berkeley. This is called When I'm Her by Sarah Zock Rich Yang. I read this, I talked about this in my March part one wrap up. Full disclosure, I'm not sure if this is coming out before that, but either way, I really enjoyed this book. So deep dive when I do the wrap up, but this one is like a Freaky Friday single white female situation. So we have two friends, Mary and Elizabeth. They met in college. We get dual timelines of college and now, and something happened in the past and Elizabeth lets Mary take the blame for it. And in the present, Mary is out for revenge, but she doesn't want to destroy Elizabeth's life. And Elizabeth is an influencer. She has tons of money. She has the fantastic husband. She has the perfect life, money, fame, adulation from all the people. Mary wants to take her life. And this is not a spoiler. This is the back of the book. The hitch with this story is in what Eliza Jane Brazier calls a steminist thriller is she's going to body swap her sworn enemy because that's a thing that can happen in this world. So be careful what you wish for. If it looks too good to be true, it probably is. And what a really fantastic concept. I've always been intrigued by Freaky Friday, the idea that you could like be in somebody else's body. 
there was this Katherine Heigl movie from a thousand years ago called Wish Upon a Star, and I was obsessed because I wanted to be the little sister who got to be Katherine Heigl in the movie. And this is a much more dark, sinister, messed up version of that in this one. And I loved everything about it. So good. This is her second book, my first of hers, and I loved it. So highly recommend this one. The next book I have is Meet the Benedettos by Katie Katungo. So I talked about how I thought Amber from Books and Beaches recommended this. Amber talked about it. It turns out Becca from Bad on Paper is the one who recommended it, but I don't think Amber's read it yet. I know that she hauled it in her video too. I did read it. So this is pitched as The Kardashians meets Pride and Prejudice. However you feel about The Kardashians, take it or leave it. This is about five sisters who basically are famous for being famous. They had been on a reality TV show that centered around her father and his business. And this is sort of a few years after the show has gone off the air. Their life is not as glamorous as it once appeared to be, slash maybe once was. So we get a dynamic of sort of what is going on with the family, what fame has done to them. There's a real dynamic bond relationship between the five sisters. And then the angle is that this Hollywood star, Chris Bingley, who was the dashing star of Major Fantastic, moves into their Hollywood neighborhood and his best friend, Will Darcy, comes with him. He is also an actor. And we get some hate to love between Will and Lily Benedetto. We get some hijinks, parties, there's so much great humor to this. There is a little bit of weightiness to it. It's not fully explored in all the ways. So this is a book I would say just take it for what it is. I enjoyed it as just a palate cleanser, an easy fun read, you're out in LA, and I really enjoyed Will and Lily very, very much. There's a lot of really funny lines in this book. I did some dog earring, but I had a good time with it. And then I have two books which came in the same package. And these are from Wednesday Books. So we have The Other Lola by Ripley Jones. So this is the sequel to Missing Clarissa. So they actually gifted me Missing Clarissa last year, which I read and enjoyed. These are YA thrillers, and this is two best friends who wound up starting a true crime podcast to solve a murder in their hometown. And then in this one, the sequel, I don't want to say anything that's going to ruin book one, but it says in Missing Clarissa, a girl goes missing. In the other Lola, a girl comes back. So we have a girl named Maddie who is a freshman at their high school. Our best friends are Blair and Cam. And this girl shows up on their doorstep looking for their help because her sister Lola has mysteriously disappeared. So it's been five years, no trace was ever found. And now Lola is back, but Maddie's not convinced the girl who returned is actually her sister. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. They sent the most beautiful packaging for these books and I love the covers and we'll see. So Ripley Jones is a very unknown secret person. We'll see what happens here. But again, YA thrillers, podcast element, which I totally love. And I'm excited. I'm excited to see where else the story goes. So very cool. Thanks Wednesday. Very excited. Okay, the next one is another one that I pre-ordered. And if you guys watched my weekend vlog that I did, I talked about going to Barnes & Noble to try and find expiration dates by Rebecca Searle. I was convinced in my head that Barnes & Noble had a special edition. I never followed up to see if that was actually true or not. And then I was like, I'm not gonna read it right away. I'll just wait till it comes out. And then I basically came home and pre-ordered it. So <laughs> just like, and they didn't actually have it at Barnes & Noble. So I wound up buying it anyway. So this is, did I say it's expiration dates by Rebecca Searle? I feel like I did. So this is her first real romance. She tackles romantic love in this one. So a lot of mixed feelings about in five years, one Italian summer that they were pitched as romance, some people feel, but they weren't romance. I loved those books. I'm a big fan of Rebecca Searle's writing and I loved the friendship dynamic that is explored in In Five Years. It is, my voice, it's about the like platonic love between two friends 
And that's the love story that's the center of that book. One Italian Summer is a story about a woman whose mom has passed away and she winds up going to Italy to take the trip her and her mother were supposed to take together and really explores the love and the bond between mothers and daughters. But this one is actually about romance, romance, and hopefully the people will be excited about it. I'm excited about it. So it says being single is like playing the lottery. There's always the chance that with one piece of paper you could win it all. So it should be said that Rebecca Searle always does a bit of magical realism in her books. So every time that Daphne meets a new man, she receives a slip of paper with his name and a number on it. It's the exact amount of time they will be together. The papers told her she'd spend three days with Martin in Paris, five weeks with Noah in San Francisco, and three months with Hugo, her ex-boyfriend turned best friend. So Daphne's been receiving numbered papers for over 20 years, always wondering when there might be one without an expiration. Finally, the night of a blind date at her favorite at her favorite Los Angeles restaurant, there's only a name, Jake. So we shall see what happens between Daphne and Jake. I imagine no road is going to be smooth. I'm checking to see if there was anything cool on the naked cover. There is not, <laughs> but I'm a big fan of her writing and I'm a big fan of her as a writer. I've listened to a lot of interviews with her and she just strikes me as like a super cool chick and I love her books. So I'm excited to read this one and I imagine it'll make me cry. I've loved all of her books, so. I'm excited. Okay, the next two books were gifted to me from Book of the Month. So if you saw my, I just kicked the tripod a little bit, what's coming out in April, you would have also had a glimpse of these books. So the first one is Abby Jimenez, and this is just for the summer. This is her newest release. And I have enjoyed some Abby. I have a lot of catching up to do. She's got some backlist also on top of this front list, but I like her love stories. I like her humor. I like her characters. And she also seems to combine a good mix of romance and humor and weightiness, some serious topics mixed in with some lighter fare, and it feels very real and relatable to me. So she is definitely an author that I enjoy. So this says, four dates, a kiss, and a breakup. That's all it will take to find their soulmate. When it comes to love, Emma is cursed. Every guy she dates finds his true love after they break up. But it turns out she's not the only one afflicted with this condition. His name is Justin, and his Reddit thread about being, quote, love's good luck charm has gone viral. Now the two have come up with an ingenious plan. If they date each other, their curses will cancel out and they'll go on to find their soulmates. Only Justin wasn't supposed to be so unbelievably cute and hilarious. So I'm gonna guess that this is kind of like fake dating-ish maybe turns into true romance. So it says, has fate finally brought the perfect pair together? Or will their cure be way more hazardous than the curse itself? We're all gonna find out, so I'm excited. There's something about summer I feel like that kind of makes me wanna have lighter fare. I don't know why I'm saying summer, spring. This just looks like a summer book. <laughs> so the next book that I have from Book of the Month is How to End a Love Story by Yulin Kuang. So this also totally grabbed my attention. So for one, she is the screenwriter for Emily Henry's People We Meet on Vacation and the writer director for Beach Read. So when I had seen that connection originally kind of about this book, I was like, I need to like know more about this woman. So this is the book that I chose and I'm excited. So it says Helen Zhang hasn't seen Grant Shepard once in the 13 years since the tragic accident that bound their lives together forever. Now a best-selling author, Helen pours everything into her career. She's even scored a coveted spot in the writer's room of the TV adaptation of her young adult novels. And if she can hide her imposter syndrome, surely the rest of her life will fall into place too. LA's the fresh start she needs. So you know, it's not gonna go as good as planned. So when Helen gets there, she realizes that Grant is actually working on her show, forcing them to be back together again. And it says Grant is exactly as Helen remembers him, charming, popular, and lovable in ways she's never been. And Helen's exactly as Grant remembers too, brilliant, beautiful, closed off. But working together is messy and electrifying and Helen's parents who have never forgiven Grant have no idea he's in the picture at all. So kind of a star-crossed lovers, secrets in the past, secrets in the present. I don't know, I'm really excited. So again, very intrigued about her as an author and this is her debut and I'll let you guys know when I read it. Okay, a couple more books that I picked up myself. The first one is The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory. So I talked about this in a different video and I'm sure you guys are so tired of hearing about it. I've been doing a lot of deep dives of the old episodes of the Bad on Paper podcast and 
they were talking about Jasmine Gilroy's books and I realized I have never read them. I've kind of been in this romance kind of a mood lately. So I picked up The Wedding Date, which is the first book in maybe at this point, maybe like a five book series, I want to say. So it says, I vow to take thee as my date to pretend to have and to hold from rehearsal dinner to reception end till Sunday do us part. So we've got some fake dating going on between Alexa Monroe and Drew Nichols. So it says Drew has never found it hard to meet women or to know just when to leave them. But now on the eve of his ex's wedding festivities, he's minus a plus one until a power outage strands him with the perfect candidate for a fake girlfriend. So they wind up having more fun than they expected because isn't that always the way? But Drew has to fly back to LA and his job as a pediatric surgeon and Alexa heads home to Berkeley where she's the mayor's chief of staff and neither of them can stop thinking about each other. So long distance, fake dating, what do we think is going to happen in this love story? I think something good. I think something good. And I'm going to keep saying it when I read it. I'll let you guys know. Okay. Slight change because we had to change the battery because it wouldn't be me if we're not changing the battery. Okay. Next book. I have Watch It Burn by Kristen Bird. So this is a pre-order that came in. I read the arc of this. I've talked about this many, many times on my channel. I am such a big fan of hers. I was such a big fan of this book. This is again, female friendship non-toxic in this one, but definitely living in a toxic town with the group who swears they're not a cult, but they're totally a cult, but they swear they're not a cult. So this is three friends who band together to burn it all down. The back says Nexium meets Southern Suspense. So another book set in Texas. I'm just such a huge fan of hers and I'm so happy to have this to add to my collection of Kristen Bird books. But if you guys have not already picked this one up, I highly recommend it. She's such a good writer. She creates such wonderful characters. And it's definitely like that small town feel to it, but big problems, complicated relationships. And I just had such a fun time reading this book. So very happy about it. Stunning cover, year of the cover, my friends. And I also got a note from her that it's a USA Today bestseller now also. So I did work on, work on, helped with her pre-order campaign along with a bunch of other booktubers. So for anyone out there who picked it up because of something maybe they heard here on my channel or saw on Instagram, on behalf of Kristen, thank you so much. It's such a huge accomplishment to be a USA Today bestseller. And again, I'm just, well, I always want to scream about the authors that I love and I'm just such a big fan of hers. So yay for Watch It Burn. So happy to have it. And then, I mean, I'm happy to have everything, but you know what I mean. Okay, <laughs> the next book I have is 1000 words and this is by jamie attenberg so i have heard or i should say i had heard of her she came onto my radar writing advice writer started to get into her Substack, started to listen to different podcasts and then when i saw she had a book coming out i knew i had to have it so this is a writer's guide to staying creative focused and productive all year round with wisdom and inspiration from more than 50 beloved writers so Jamie Attenberg herself says in 2018, faced with a looming deadline, she needed motivation. Using a boot camp model, she and a friend set out to write 1,000 words every day for two weeks. They opened this practice to Attenberg's online community and soon hundreds and thousands of people started using hashtag 1,000 words of summer to track their work and support one another. So it's kind of like a mini nano rhino, rhymo. So like mini in less words a day, by almost 700, but bigger in that it was like all summer long. So I live for a writing challenge, you guys know. So 1000 Words is about becoming and staying motivated, discovering yourself and your creative desires and approaching your craft from a new direction. So this is just a whole series of vignettes, short stories, inspirational posts, um, all across the board on all sorts of things. And I'm very excited to get into it. So it says that it's got, I mean, the laundry list of contributor contributors from Megan Abbott, Ruman Allen, Rebecca Carroll, Melissa Ferbos, Roxanne Gay, Andrew, Sean Greer, Lauren Groff. I'm Jasmine Gilroy, who I just talked about, Rebecca Mackay, Liz Moore. There's just so many names on the back of here. Emma Straub. Meg Wolitzer, Brian Washington, Patricia Lockwood, on and on and on, Leah Johnson, on and on and on. So this is definitely, I feel like one of those books you can dip in and out of, but I also feel like it's one of those books you might want to keep on reading. 
So I will keep you guys posted on this, but I'm excited about it. It's broken into the seasons, which is kind of interesting. And I will let you guys know as I read it, like I said. But I have a feeling there's gonna be a lot of underlining and dog earring and very much making this book all my very own. So excited for that. And then the next book I have was gifted to me from Berkeley. This is Island Witch by Amanda Jayatisa. So I have not started this one yet. She was on my most anticipated list as well. And after I finished, let's just do it, A Step Past Darkness by Vera Kurian, which was a pre-order I made, which I read, these are both billed as slow burn books and I did not want to slow burn, slow burn back to back. I also was heading on my work trip after I finished this and I did not want to carry a big heavy paper or a big heavy hardback onto the plane with me. So this is on my sooner rather than later book. And my friend, Ashley Winstead, I'm such a fan, says raw, raw brutal and beautiful. Riley Sager says a fresh new voice in psychological suspense. This is folklore. I think we dip into horror. I think we get into Thrillerville. Like I said, a slower burn. So I was a huge fan of My Sweet Girl, which was her debut, and You're Invited was her second book, which was the destination wedding in Sri Lanka, where like, maybe you didn't want to be invited to that wedding after all. It was so fun. So this is set in 19th century Sri Lanka and inspired by local folklore. So this book follows the daughter of a traditional demon priest. She's relentlessly bullied by peers and accused of witchcraft herself as she tries to solve the mysterious attacks that have been terrorizing her coastal village. So I want to say in Ashley Winstead's post, she said that like the last housewife would be lucky to share shelf space with this book. So I'm guessing there's going to be some feminist rage to this, which gets me very excited. This is also a departure for Amanda Jayatisa. She has not, she, both of her books were like set in present day. I do feel like there was some folklore within My Sweet Girl, but I think she's really going all in in this one. And it sounds like such a personal experience of writing this for her as well, which I'm really interested in. So I have intentionally stayed away from any kind of reviews because I am so sketch on any kind of spoiler. You know how I've been spoiled for books before. So stay tuned for this one because I will be reading it on the sooner side. Samantha Downing says it's like nothing else I've ever read. I feel like this is going to be one of those books where you're really kind of needing to be engrossed in it and being able to dedicate a lot of time. Not a book you can dip in and out of easily, nor do I think it's a book I'm gonna to wanna to dip in and out of. So you guys will be the first to know when I read it. So stay tuned for that. And then super quickly, A Step Past Darkness. I did review this in my March part one, which again, you maybe have seen by now. This is also a slow burn. This is her love letter to It by Stephen King, which is her favorite book. And it combines kind of It plus The Breakfast Club plus The Goonies is how it's described. So we have six friends who are in high school together. It is the summer between junior and senior year, kind of an unlikely group of friends who are put together for a school project and something happens that binds them together forever. So we get six POVs, which is super ambitious, but I think she does a really good job of distinguishing these characters, just the way she can thread the consistency between each character throughout the past and the present timeline. Like I can't even imagine what her wallboard must have looked like when she was writing this book, but we get a past and present mystery in present day. One of the friend group has been found dead in their hometown, which they all left promptly after high school and the death looks very suspicious. So the group reunites for the first time in 20 years to face what happened in the past and to solve this new mystery in the present and in a similar Ashley Winstead vibe. So The Last Housewife would be friends with the Island Witch, I think. Midnight is the Darkest Hour would be friends with the Step Past Darkness. So that's my read likes for Ashley Winstead, but I did read this and enjoyed it. But again, very slow burn. Her first book, Never Saw Me Coming, which was Chloe the Psychopath, which was fantastic and dark humor and fast and witty is very different from this book, but the writing is beautiful. Her characters are great. She puts so much into her books. And I think these both are like very epic feats for both of these authors and I'm excited for them. So that's a thing. And then I've got two more and I haven't read either of them. So these are also both gifted to me from publishers. The first one is from, actually they're both from Berkeley. 
So this is Technically Yours by Denise Williams, and it says, Sometimes Love Needs a Reboot. And <laughs> I thought this was the second part of the tagline. It just says, Author of Do You Take This Man? So Sometimes Love Needs a Reboot. That's the tagline on this one. So eight years ago, he fell in love with a stranger he couldn't have. Today she's back in his life and the sparks between them threaten to set her career on fire. Pearl Harris has learned the hard way to be careful in work and in love. She has the chance to make lasting change at Our Code, a nonprofit aimed at inspiring high schoolers to code. But a recent scandal put its reputation at risk. Hmm. Further complicating things, Pearl didn't expect the one man she never stopped thinking about to join as the newest member of her board of directors. So enter Cord Matthews, who fell for Pearl when they met in an elevator eight years ago. They met in an elevator too. What's happening here? What's happening here? Okay, so she's just his type, smart, capable, and makes him laugh. But when she broke his heart, he decided love wasn't for him. So they reconnect, Cord is tempted. They're both hesitant to trust their feelings and take any risk. I'm like scanning a little bit because I'm like, what do I want to know? What do I want to know? And we'll find out what happens. So not really enemies to lovers, not hate to love, resistant to love, second chance romance. I guess it's second chance romance is how we would do this. I'm still like getting my, it's been years. I'm still finding my romance legs. So anyway, totally appealed to me. Very excited. And I'm curious to see. I have not read anything else by Denise Williams and she has written a bunch of books and I'm gonna start here. So they're all standalones, or at least this is a standalone. So, oh yeah, if you love second chances, <laughs> read the book, Audrey, read the book. Carly Fortune says, if like me, you love second chances, banter that snaps and steam that fogs up your window. Yes, Carly, do yourself a favor and put technically yours on your TBR. Well, there you have it. There you have it. Should have just read what Carly Fortune said. And then the last book I have, which I am also, I'm a broken record. I want to read it on the sooner side. She's happening. It's happening. It's happening. It's all happening. It's Murder Road by Simone St. James. So this was shockingly and amazingly sent to me from Berkeley and I did not see it coming. And I'm so excited and I can't wait to read this. I can't wait to read this. So I have stayed pretty vague on this one as well. So this is about a couple who picks up a hitchhiker on the road and the hitchhiker is injured. They wind up being suspects, like in the death. There's been a string of murders committed along this old road. They are on their honeymoon. I want to say they took a wrong turn. They weren't supposed to be there. They tried to do a good deed by helping this injured hitchhiker. And now they find themselves in the middle of this terrible investigation and gruesome murders. And I can't even wait to see what Simone St. James is going to do next. So I have read a couple of her books. I need to read more, but this is where I'm going next and I'm excited for it. And I actually, this was another book. So you guys know I don't TBR, I don't plan. I go where the mood takes me. I was trying to figure out what to read next. I was still crawling out of my night watching really, really disturbed. It took me several, several, several books to get out of that like real darkness before I want to voluntarily go back into the darkness. But I read the dedication in the front and it says for anyone who was told they're weird because they read too much because you're not and you don't, which has nothing to do with the book, but it kind of made my eyes tear up and it still does again. So I am currently like 10% into a new book. And then I think, I don't want to jinx it guys. We all know how this goes. This is not wood. I would intend to read this next. I was trying to balance out because I was listening to Where Sleeping Girls Lie on audiobook. And I didn't want to read another like heavy thriller at the same time. So I had finished what I was physically reading, which was Meet the Benedettos. And then I picked up Pretty Girls by Janelle Brown. Do you guys want to know any of this? Here it is. It's a book haul, but I'm going to tell you what I'm reading. And that is more psychological thriller. And now I have finished Where Sleeping Girls Lie. And I totally have an opening for this, but I've already started another book. So stay tuned here to find out what I read next. Or if you really want to live on the edge, stay tuned to my Instagram because I post a heck of a lot of stuff there too, usually in a more timely fashion than sometimes the videos roll out. I film the videos, but there's sometimes there's a delay. There's a delay in you guys seeing it. So 
Anyway, you can find me here. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Goodreads. And I talk about books in all of those places. So until we meet again, friends, thank you so much for being here, for watching. Let me know, have you hauled anything lately? Have you read any of these books? What are you keeping your eye out for? This year has so many books. So, 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 so many books. I did that unhaul recently. I definitely need to keep unhauling books to make room for books. And that's, that's, the, that's the story I have, which is not really a story at all. That's just me making random statements. So I'm gonna go because I've got things to do and videos to edit, and I will see you in the next video. And I hope everyone's doing great. Thank you for being here. I already said that, but I will talk to you guys really soon. Take care, everybody. Bye. <laughs>